Welcome to Dynamics Con. Let's get ready to learn from our Microsoft Dynamics 365, Dynamics GP, and Power Platform superheroes. Stay tuned for our Microsoft Success Day tomorrow with content designed around implementation, optimization, and expansion, user adoption, and migration. Our multi-day event is free thanks to our heroic sponsors. Be sure to visit our roundtable sessions held throughout the conference by clicking on the roundtables tab found on the left menu bar. Check out the event info section on the home tab for more details on our rapidly growing Dynamics user group community. Here we go, superheroes. Please welcome first time Dynamics Con speaker, Scott Jorgens. Today, this speaker will be showcasing premiering content in the session, Six Tips for Digital Transformation While Staying on GP. Please stick around after Scott's session for a live Q&A. GP Support North. Uh, thank you, Dynamics Con, and for all of our uh, followers who voted for us for today's session. Uh, really excited to be presenting today. Uh, today's topic is the top six tips for digital transformation while staying on Microsoft Dynamics GP. The inspiration for this session was in response to a lot of the hype around cloud applications and how they can transform your business. And through our internal discussions and talking with clients, we really found that the majority of business transformation and digital transformation can happen with Dynamics GP, keeping Dynamics GP as your core and then surrounding it with cloud applications or making changes within Dynamics GP. You don't necessarily need to change platforms. So first of all, long live Dynamics GP. GP is gonna be around for a long time. Uh, there's a number of proof points. Uh, first of all, and I'll show this on the next slide, there's a Dynamics GP roadmap to 2028 and beyond. That's a capital B for beyond. There's been uh, most recent release is GP 18.5. Uh, it was released last October, similar to like new models on a car. Uh, the releases are happening in the fall for the following year or right away. So we sort of quote, call it Dynamics GP 2023, GP 2023 but the official is 18.5 and that came out in October. There's also multiple posts uh, online for learn.microsoft.com that talks about the modern life cycle and the fixed life cycle. Uh, it talks about what's new in Dynamics uh, GP and has a number of help uh, sections within learn.microsoft.com. And there was a flurry of activity this last fall with official blog posts and LinkedIn posts all basically saying Microsoft is fully committed to supporting our Dynamics GP customers for years to come. That is actually within the URL and is a clean message. We have additional information. Uh, you can see a link down on the bottom and uh, feel free to check that out. Uh, we have a number of points and links back to the sources for sort of a hashtag GP strong future. So as I mentioned, uh, the GP roadmap going out to 2028 and beyond. There's two sections here. So up on the top of the lighter blue, that's the fixed life cycle. GP used to be on a fixed life cycle. Basically each number would be released 2013, 2015. It'd be good for five years on mainstream support and then an extended support uh, past that for an additional five years. So we're getting 10 years out of uh, the application. So some of the naysayers may jump onto those saying specific pieces are ending support and the sky is falling. They're just trying to sell you uh, new applications. The new modern life cycle came out in 2019. The modern life cycle is basically aligning Dynamics GP with a lot of the other licensing that you would find in subscriptions and uh, other Microsoft component uh, products. And with the modern life cycle, they're requesting an annual update they have a defined cycle that's gonna come out each year with updates, hot fixes, year-end updates for payroll and other components. So with the modern life cycle, the, the version is called Microsoft Dynamics GP. There is no year, now we're getting into the 18.3, 18.4, 18.5, and that version is gonna just keep going with updates uh, as things continue. So today's session, 
top six tips for digital transformation. What I have uh, done is we'll talk about the tip. We'll look at what we, what we can find, what to look for, and then go on to the next slide, how to resolve. How, how do we look at next steps? How do we start implementing and divide, defining the scope for our digital transformation? So GP tip number one, review your business processes. What we want to look for is what manual entry do we have? Are there ways that we can automate some of these uh, manual entries? As you recall, back in, all the way back in the 1920s, they had the, the, the concept of time studies. That was looking at manufacturing processes, people on the line. How long does it take for each touch, touch, each task? How can we do things quicker, bigger, better, faster? If we take the same sort of lens, we're going to be able to build a current state assessment. If you want to build a business case for change, you want to justify investments, we need to be able to have what is the current state, what are some of the pain points, and how can those be changed with our business transformation. We're not just going to grab the latest shiny object and ram it into the system or to complement GP. There's going to take an intelligent, cautious, prudent approach. So looking at business processes, are there steps where people within finance are opening, viewing, editing, sending, sorting, saving, attaching, all those different steps together? And can that be automated? Can there be a bot for that? Can there be uh, different automated processes? Are there portals? And then also look at the approvals process. So when you have an approvals process, just ask the questions, the who, what, where, why, when, how. Really what we want to be doing is quantifying the cost, quantifying the effort, quantifying the touch points. So review your business process is tip number one. How do we get there? Well, let's use the following as a lens. Can we start digital, stay digital? Are there areas for optimization? There's new cool tools out there. So OCR has been around for a number of years, used to be with photocopiers, uh, now scanning and even taking PDF documents. There's a ton of great tools and they have artificial intelligence. They have machine learning. Their quality is returned, you know, improved tenfold. You see it on the bank machines, you put in checks, it reads it, it types in your amount. You can even have mobile phones. They're taking photos and automatically translating that and typing into a system. This is going to reduce data entry and many of those uh, analysis that you've looked at. Also be sure to look for new perspectives. Do you have recent hires that have joined your organization, especially within finance, and they may, may have been exposed to other users and other systems, uh, other organizations are using Dynamics GP and how have they optimized some of their systems? Talk to user groups. This is Dynamics Con. This is a user group. Talk to peers or talk to some of the external experts that are part of the user group as part of uh, others. And obviously, you know, it's a very strong community within Dynamics GP, and many of us are here to help. With that and said, there is a chat and questions that you can type into uh, these, uh, your user interface here. And at the end of this presentation, we'll review those Q&As. I have a friend over here that's going to help me prompt me with these uh, Q&A and we'll be able to get your answers at the end. So tip number two, looking further to automate processes within finance. So now that we've done some analysis, let's follow the bouncing ball. What kind of things can we look at that are repetitive? Repetitive and consistent tasks are a lot easier to automate because it doesn't take the same business processes or thinking. So are there consistent, repeatable actions, especially if there's um, repeated costs? So say your water cooler bill, it's the same bill, same amount, it comes in every month. Can that be pre-approved? Does it need to be touched by multiple individuals before it gets into GP for reporting? Talk about reporting, month and reporting, month and close. Do you have board reporting packages? Are there things that are done weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly that happen time and time again in a consistent fashion? Maybe we can automate some of those finance processes. So how to resolve this? 
First of all, look at the 80-20 rule. If you try to automate absolutely everything and you want it to be bulletproof and you want zero decision making, it is going to cost you a fortune. If you look at the low hanging fruit and say, I'm going to automate 80% of this, it's going to cost you far less and it's going to have great returns. And you still have individuals to deal with the exception handling. As over time, as you mature, as the product mature, as your understandings mature, as you potentially have an opportunity to change your business processes, more and more of those can be automated. Creating decision trees is a great way. Create guardrails. This is around that auto approvals. So I have an example of the water cooler, even a uh, website. You know, our website, we have a monthly hosting fee. It's the same amount each month. We shouldn't have to be asking for an approval. Do you approve this invoice? If it's the same amount, just self-approve it, auto-approve it, move it through. If the dollars move out of plus or minus 10 bucks on that monthly invoice, yeah, let someone know. Or provide me with a quarterly or monthly summary. Not monthly summary, maybe even an annual summary. Here is what we've done on your behalf as a line of business. Workflow automation is another thing within finance. I strongly suggest everyone look at it. The built-in functions within Dynamics GP have improved greatly in the last five years. There is exception handling. There's better routing. There's better integration with Office 365. GP is a great tool. You don't need to change ERP platforms just to be able to satisfy that. There's also a number of third-party ISVs. Uh, that's third independent software vendors, third body products that also do a lot of automated tasks. And we'll talk about those uh, further on in today's presentation. Have any questions? Again, type it into the chat as we keep going. And I'll actually, I think I'll have a pause uh, once we get halfway through. So we're on tip number three. We're 10 minutes in. Uh, thanks everyone for sticking around. And this is really going to be uh, a lot of great tips from our consultants. Uh, based on their experience in Dynamics GP for the last 30 years, plus uh, working with clients. So we talked about uh, doing a current state analysis, uh, automating finance. How can we help extend the power of Dynamics GP and your ERP out to the line of business? The first step and the easiest one is really looking at OKRs, objectives and key results, formerly known as KPI, Key Performance Indicators. Really, the metrics, how do people make better decisions? How do they know if a decision is good or bad? How do they know if results are good or bad? Is there stoplights and dashboards that you can create throughout your organization? The nice thing is finance. Typically, uh, finance individuals are good with reports, good with data. And this is stuff that you can create a value add and create some of the measurements and value chain out to the organization. So how do we resolve that? Again. Look for KPIs, look for OKRs that the different lines of business are using. Create some cross-functional workshops. Can you work as groups or become a shared service, a shared advisor from finance, leading other parts of your organization into their automation efforts? And then as well, uh, your IT team and business analysts, there are great tools from Microsoft, Power Apps, Power Automate, the whole power platform. It's one of the streams within DynamicsCon uh, associated with CRM, but a lot of the power apps options also can extend out. These integrate with GP and with SQL Server, especially with SQL Server views. That's a nice, easy way to take a subset of GP without accessing the full uh, database. So talk to your providers or your team and figure out how to get some of these components to further automate your business and supporting the line of business. So as I said, you know, our goal here is digital transformation while staying on Dynamics GP, keeping GP as a core, and we can surround it with a cloud of different applications. So far, we've looked at review the business processes, automating finance, and then extending from finance out into the line of business metrics. If you need to pause now, good time to type in a few questions. Uh, into the Q&A, and we'll jump into those as we get to the end of the presentation. So with our session, continuing on, our fourth tip is to extend your digital transformation to outside 
of just your line of business outside of finance? How can we extend things further? One of the great things to look at are what is the flow of documents? Are there submissions? Are there opportunities for self-service reports? Can you create a few master reports where individual line of business can do filters on their own in a self-service portal rather than requesting for a specific finance reports to go out to them? There's also a number of metrics that you can build. Again, back to tip number one, are there some time studies? Can you look at the frequency, the prevalence that things are happening across each line of business? And there's tons of inspiration out there. You are not alone. There is inspiration from out the market, from your peers within the community, as well as through various uh, third-party apps. So with that said, how to resolve? Let's look at some of these apps. Let's look at some of these best of breed approaches and cloud applications. Some are still on premise and available, tightly integrated within your systems within GP. Many of the GP third party providers also have cloud versions and are supporting the new Business Central cloud based uh, ERP as well. Others have come from the Dynamics Nav or even Sage and other competitive products and being in the cloud are really embracing a lot more of the Microsoft community and integrations back into Dynamics GP. Why? Because GP is great and GP is secure to stay. So you're seeing a lot of new applications out in the marketplace that are coming and integrating into Dynamics GP. So look at PO requisition and approvals, AP, AR, online billing, time and expense, leave management, vacation approvals. So you submit a vacation request off to a manager, the manager approves it or denies it. There's a feedback loop back to the individual, stuff gets tracked. We have compliance, we have HR, we have finance, we have links to payroll. All of that can be happen and used through mobile devices, through online self-serve portals. These are things that are digital transformation for the organization. Again, we keep GP as the core and we can augment it with these additional systems. One of the cool ones that uh, I've seen recently is uh, the online billing. You can um, send out online bills and create a portal to, uh, to your clients, handles the communications, handles reminders for collections, and you got a little big brother approach that you can see when your clients have opened their invoice. So when it comes to collections management, hey, you're past your 30 days, you're past your 60 days, hey, you're up to 90 days. I see you opened and looked at the invoice 60 days ago. I see that you looked at it again 10 days ago. Is there an issue? Um, do we need a feedback loop on that? Uh, was there an issue with on our part for the invoice? Or are you just playing games? And you can call them out with some of those self-serve portals. Reporting packages and budgeting. Budgeting and forecasting has been very popular. Obviously, you know, we've all been doing budgets and forecasts on an annual basis for a number of years. GP allows you to put in your budgets, actual versus budget. But more and more organizations are trying to move to a quarterly forecast, trying to put a little more of a collaborative, fun approach. And with work from home and hybrid working, that needs to be in the cloud or needs to be in a system where you can access it remotely. So using some of those systems to have a self-service, do your budgets, have that feedback loop back and forth and move, move along with the bouncing ball has been fantastic for some organizations. Something to consider as part of your digital transformation. So type five, I kind of hinted at this, looking at an increased focus on communications. So not just automating your processes, but how are you communicating to outside parties? What to look for? Look at your consumer com communications. Consumer com communications have been happening for a number of years, and we're often some of the first ones. Email, newsletters, uh, sales and marketing. How are they communicating to your customers? And can you leverage some of those tools or copy those concepts and use them with different tools, but to support vendors, to support how finance interacts with your customers, not from a sales perspective, but from a billing perspective, from a uh, communications, keeping addresses, credit cards, other information up to date. Sometimes those are finance options, operations, not necessarily sales and marketing. How can we eliminate paper? 
You know, if you look at some approvals, do you still have old school a paper invoice comes in and someone's signing it? Are you retaining that or can it be scanned and stored electronically? Electronic storage is way cheaper than storing paper boxes and putting them uh, into storage closets and moving them off site, um, and especially trying to retrieve them uh, for later should you ever be audited. So resolving communications, email is easy. Can you create some shared email boxes? Uh, AR at gpsupportnorth.com, finance at, etc. for your own business. The internal workflows I touched upon. Dynamics GP has a great doc attach function, and there's additional add-ons that even make doc attach that much easier and leverage the workflows within Dynamics GP to do the AP automation, the AR automation, some of those different components. Or as I mentioned, a number of ISV applications are available. The billing and customer statements that I talked about, a little bit of the big brother approach to see what's been accessed or not. The budgeting and workflow around forecasts, even scenario planning, and that collaboration uh, that can happen between finance and line of business. One of the fun aspects with digital transformation and adopting some of these automated tools is it frees up time for many of your finance individuals and they can raise their game into be more of advisors, more of the analysis and less of the paper processing. Uh, sometimes it does put pressure on the caliber individuals, but having stretch opportunities is really gonna help you with your retention and the engagement within your own finance team. That in all is digital transformation helping everyone to be bigger, better, faster, more competitive within North America on a global basis, not only with your peers on the state and provincial level, the country level, but on a global basis. And this is where automation really does come in. So we're coming up on uh, approaches. Looks like we're going a little bit quicker, so we'll have to slow down a little bit. Uh, our six tips for digital transformation as a recap Look at your business processes, do some of the time studies, understand what your current state is, and uh, try to build a business case for change. That business case of change is gonna compare a current state to a future state. That future state could include automating finance functions, could include reaching out to line of business, to operations, to manufacturing, to sales, to marketing teams, to compliance teams, to other other individuals across the organization, and how do, how do they have metrics to know if they're doing good or average? How can you help advise them and build numbers, reports, dashboards? How do you help them capture information through forms? Those forms could feed GP, those forms could uh, feed other systems, and maybe GP and financial data is gonna be that source of truth that's going to validate that what they're capturing and uh, leading indicators are, are correct and common and understood. Remote self-service. There's a ton of self-service as aspects that are available. Letting employees self-serve is a convenience to them, but also frees up time on you because you're pushing some of the data entry to their aspects. Can you use some of the tools such as OCR where say expense management, they can take a picture of their expense statement or drag and drop a PDF from their email into an application. And that's automatically gonna read the PDF and fill out their forms for them for their expense submission. There's a lot of great tools that makes everyone's lives easier. You're saving time for manager approvals. You're saving time for directors and VPs, not just for finance. So when it comes to digital transformation, Think outside of the box. Think outside of just Dynamics GP. Look at those communications and how you are focusing across the entire organization. These are many of the value proposition that organizations are saying, rip out GP and replace it with something else. Here's all the great things are potential. Honestly, all these great things are potential while still staying on GP. There are some that may be better, may be done slightly better, but... Others that it's exactly the same, especially when it comes to some of these third-party applications. If you do a best of breed, it may actually be the same application 
that you're using connected to GP as you would connect to Business Central. So why change your ERP if you're using the same outside application? That also does provide, should you ever change down the road, you know, back 2028, 2038, 2048, maybe you want to change applications in the back end. It could just be a switch and replace, but that front end uh, system that is a self-serve portal may actually stay the same in the new versions of that as it goes. So with our top six tips, going into our uh, last tip, Maintain an up-to-date Dynamics GP platform. What that means is look at that modern life cycle. We talked about uh, modern versus fixed. The modern life cycle provides more smaller, easier, quick updates to Dynamics GP. The update process is sometimes a matter of hours, maybe a half day to a day to put in these quick updates. What happens with the modern life cycle is when there's a year end update, the payroll updates for those that are using payroll, hot fixes, they result in updating GP from an 18.3 to an 18.5 or 18.4 up to 18.5. You really, you're easy to stay into the latest version just with the quick updates. I want you all to consider moving from doing a major upgrade every two to four years or longer to every one year or two. Keep an eye out, obviously, for notices from your GP partner and ISVs, because sometimes there is a risk of compatibility issues. An example that came up was Office 365 a year or two ago announced they're going to mandate two-factor authentication and mandate some other authentication uh, security parameters. These were security standards that didn't even exist when GP first came out. Microsoft released the fixes to the modern life cycle Everything was fine for those that were on the modern life cycle and were on 18.2, 18.3, 18.4, now 18.5. If they were all all the way back on GP 2016, 2015, 2013, obviously your GP partner and GP Support North, our team can still support you on those, but you're running some more risk for compatibility for these cloud applications. If we're talking digital transformation, we're going to complement GP with potentially some outside applications obviously using some of the latest and greatest functions that are available in the most recent versions of GP. So being on that modern life cycle and staying up to date is going to reduce your risks for compatibility. So with that in mind, how to resolve that? Plan and schedule your annual updates. Get quotes ahead of time. We can give you quotes. Others can give you quotes. And look at your assumptions around your cost for upgrade versus update. In-place updates can often be done in a live system. They're just the quick hot fixes, the quick uh, movements. Dynamics GP is a mature product. And what that means is a mature product is typically the updates are not resulting in major system changes, major database changes. It's not, going, it's not designed to break the uh, integrations that you have. Upgrades in the past have had major jumps and you had to hop from one system to the next to make sure everything was fine. On the modern life cycle, these are a lot easier because GP, it works great. There's a lot of user-friendly updates that are coming out. I've seen the roadmap moving ahead uh, from Microsoft as a partner. And uh, there's a lot of little user, user enhancements, other enhancements, security enhancements is obviously a big concern, but these aren't major, major changes because GP is a mature product, it's stable. There are some clients that are going to want to use a two-step process. The two-step is really upgrade into a test environment, upgrade everything, work it all in a test environment, then do the same thing for your production environment and stack over. That's closer to the old upgrade style. You're talking, you know, days and weeks of time. It's going to cost more, but it depends on uh, what you have within your environment. Circling all back, talk to your GP provider. Uh, and get your quotes ahead of time so you can plan this out. So thanks very much. Now's a great time to type in stuff into the questions. My friend here is going to take a look at uh, the questions and feed me as we move into our Q&A session. Top top six tips for digital transformation while staying on Dynamics GP. I'm not done yet. To recap, we have a white paper that our consultants have released 
that's been the inspiration of today's discussion. The white paper followed the same steps, but has a lot more depth. You can see here, 12 pages of goodness. Review your business processes, further automate finance, design and build additional line of business metrics and help line of business embrace more digital transformation, extend GP and finance systems and line of business systems into remote self-service. Self-service can be for employees, self-service can be for customers, self-service can be for your vendors. You can have customers update their information, you have customers access invoices, you can have customers dispute or question accounts receivables, all online, all on a self-serve portal. Similar with vendors, you can place orders, obviously manufacturing and distribution companies have probably been doing EDI for years, but those are sometimes you know, back to 80, 20, 20% 20 of your clients, not all of them. There are great portals that can help extend um, the way you communicate and send documents, send remittances, and really work together uh, from a supply chain perspective, from a customer, and making it easier to do business. Ease of doing business is key. It's something that our team believes really strong in, making it easy to do business, to be a great partner uh, for our clients to reduce some of those frictions and not be a headache. Again, uh, maintaining the up-to-date systems within uh, Dynamics GP. There is an appendix in this white paper on why you should stay on GP. We'll save that for another time, but uh, suffice it to say, I've pretty much covered it uh, through our discussions. If you want to find a copy, look onto Bing, look onto Google, look for Dynamics GP North America, or obviously you can type in our URL. We have it on the homepage of the website, not hiding behind a form, not demanding all your contact information. Just download the PDF, read it, share it, love it, uh, do whatever you want. And obviously, you know, visit us uh, if it does uh, fit your needs. So with that said, thank you very much, everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today, to share uh, the insights from our GP consultants at GP Support North. And thank you, DynamicsCon, for the opportunity uh, to participate. There's a question and answers module. Please type those in, and then we'll get into our question and answers.